my question is, what do you see for, for hope? You know, we have this kind of, I think, a certain amount of hypocrisy from Western nations that want to bring about change um, and claim that to want to help people in Burma, but at the same time, you know, these governments are, are deporting like former child soldiers back to Burma. We almost we almost had that happen in Canada. Canadian friends of Burma had to intervene to stop that. I mean, do you guys see really hope, or is it, I'm I'm really a bit frustrated myself. Thank you. Of course, yes, I have hope. Many people um, asked me why I'm so active in my young age, and I of course because I have hope in my country. If actually this is hope that keeps me going, if I don't have hope. I wouldn't be speaking out and I would just do my own things and enjoy my, my own life. And I hope that one day people in Obama will really have free freedom. And since I joined the political activities, I see some of the improvements, the changes. For example, in the UK, we've been campaigning for the British government to provide more humanitarian aid in Burma. And British government did. They double humanitarian aid in Burma, and they also started funding some of the projects that promote human rights and democracy, and humanitarian aid that going into the internally displaced area. And we really appreciate that, but we still need to go for a long way for freedoms. And for the first time in 2006, United Nations Security Council discussed about Burma formally. And Burma remained on the political agenda of the UN Security Council, which is a very, um, very encouraging. Although we haven't got uh, Biden resolutions, but Burma remained on the agenda. And we also see um, lots of uh, countries like European Union and now the United States talking about high-level engagement. And that is what the people in Burma, democracy movement, asking for for many years, a high level engagement. These generals, although they are brutal, they are not stupid, they know exactly what they are doing, and they relocate the capital, they, they deny humanitarian aid to the people with purpose, and they know exactly what they want and what they do. And international community fails to understand the nature of the generals. They think that softly, softly approach like the UN approach, having 40 visits to Burma in the past 20 years, showing no significant democratic reform in Burma. And this is a failure because international community, especially the UN, has adopted a softly, softly approach. That's why we need to see more pressure. We need to see Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General himself, go into Burma and discuss about political solution with the regime and talk with oppositions, talk with genuine representatives from the ethnic groups. And we need to see a global arms embargo that will force the regime into talk with the UN and with ethnic groups and democracy movements. And at the same time, we need to see a UN to set up a commission of inquiry into war crimes and crimes against humanity and use it as a political leverage to pressure the regime into dialogue. And there, there is a body very active right now, the International War Crimes Tribunal. I know there is a large group of lawyers at Harvard and a lot of other people who are devising, thinking, planning a way to to begin an international tribunal into war crimes committed by the Burmese military regime, when they will actually be able to put that into place and have such a trial is an unknown quantity at this point. One of the things that I am hopeful about and that I have a lot of faith in is, is Burmese people. We can, we can do what we can do and we can have our positions internationally and you know agree with, argue for, sanctions, this kind of engagement, that kind of engagement. But we, we, have, we continue to see inside of Burma an active, dedicated, passionate dissident movement. And that dissident movement isn't going to go away. The military government can destroy the university system, destroy the education system, imprison
imprison protesters, execute protesters, hound the people of, of the various ethnic groups, uh, particularly now, of course, the Karen and the Shan. But Burmese people are incredibly intelligent, and they self-educate now that their university system has been destroyed. And something will shift inside Burma, which is what has to happen no matter what we do internationally. There will be a shift, I believe, I hope, I pray, within the military itself. And until that happens, until there is some, until there is one, two, three, people in the military who open a little bit. I, I don't think that anything will happen in Burma in terms of significant democratic reform. And that is why, as, as uh, slow as diplomacy can be sometimes, that is why the recent developments regarding these dialogues between the US and Burma provide me, in fact, with a little bit of hope. You know, it's a, it's, it's a long, long process, but political change from dictatorship to some kind of democracy has proven to be a long, long process. It is a, it is a huge, huge struggle. 